In this beginner's guide, we'll discuss the game mechanics of Baldur's Gate Dream. I'll explain how dice difficulty checks work, as well as how abilities affect them. I'll cover all the basic concepts such as advantage and disadvantage, along with death rolls and combat basics. By the end of the video, you should have everything you need to understand Baldur's Gate 3 game mechanics and gain understanding of how the combat works. This will help make your adventure more enjoyable. So Baldur's Gate 3 is a role-playing game developed by Larian. The gameplay mechanics are based on D&D 5th edition. If you played D&D before, you should feel right at home. However, if all of that sounds gibberish, then let me explain a bit about what D&D is. D&D, which stands for Dungeons and Dragons, is a fantasy tabletop role-playing game. In D&D, players create their characters and embark on a fantasy adventure led by a dungeon master, known as a DM. So the DM is like the storyteller and the game creator. His role is to oversee the imaginary world where the adventure takes place. The DM describes the world, sets the scene and narrates encounters, while a dice is used to determine the outcomes of the player's and NPC's actions. Okay, all of that is great, but why do I care? Well, in Baldur's Gate 3, everything works the same as Dungeons & Dragons. The DM's role is covered by the game itself. Similar to a tabletop game, you start by creating your character, choose race and class, distribute your ability points, select skill proficiencies, and then you embark on your own adventure where you are pretty much every single encounter required to roll a dice. Understanding how the dice rolls is essentially to fully enjoy the game and comprehend how all encounters work. Difficulty class determines how high your dice roll has to be to succeed in a task. As a reference in D&D, the difficulty is like this. Very easy. Difficulty check 5, easy 10, moderate 15, hard 20, very hard 25, nearly impossible 30. Larian does follow these recommendations quite closely. There is an important concept with the dice rolls. It is called critical success and critical failure. If you throw a 20, no matter what, whatever difficulty the action is, you will automatically succeed. If you throw a 1, it will be a fail. So when you create your character, you can allocate points to 6 abilities. Every single NPC in the game will have these abilities as well. Depending on the race you choose, you might get additional points to some abilities. Every single task is related to one of your 6 core abilities. Whenever you are requesting to roll a d20, d stands for dice, 20 for the maximum that your dice can roll, 20 is range between 1 to 20, you will be able to add your ability modifier. The abilities in most cases range from 1 to 20. Every even number gives you a modifier. For example, a Charisma 12 will give you a plus 1 modifier. A Charisma 14 will give you a plus 2, and so on. The same goes for scores below to 10. An 8 will give you a minus 1, and a 6 will give you a minus 2. Let's look at an example here. I found this strange creature. I have no idea what is that, and it is requesting from me money, or seems like it will attack me. So I'm trying to convince him that... I mean no harm, and then I decide to convince him that I'm here to replace him. So I choose the dialogue option, here I get the chance to roll a dice. I roll the dice and then I add the charisma modifier to it. I also have skill proficiency in deception and advantage, but I'll get back to that in a bit. So here are the 6 abilities that you have and when you will need to use them. Strat measures how strong your character is, needed for attempts to push, punch, lift, break or use an athletic skill. It is also used for melee attacks and melee damage. Dexterity reflects how agile your character is. Dexterity is related to how quick or quiet your character can be. Skills related to this ability include Acrobatics for staying on your feet while running through ice or any slippery floor. Slate of hand for stealing or planting an object on someone. Stealth for hiding and passing through enemies. This attribute will also be helpful when trying to pick locks or disable traps. It is also used for ranged attacks and attacks with melee finesse weapons. For example, a rogue with a dagger will use dexterity as their attack bonus. Constitution. Constitution checks are not very common, but they help you have a larger health pool. Every level you will be adding your constitution modifier every time you level up. Some example when constitution checks might be used, going without sleep, surviving without food or water, or drinking large amounts of alcohol. Intelligence helps your character whenever they need to dive into logic, history, memory, deduction, or how much they know. Some skill checks related to that are arcana, knowledge about spell lore, history, knowledge of historical events, investigation, looking around for clues or trying to find hidden objects, nature, knowing about terrain and its significance, religion, knowledge about rituals and religious customs. It is also used by wizards for spellcasting. Charisma used to help you whenever you try to influence others, such as persuading or lying. Skills related to it are deceptions when you lie, intimidation when you try to convince someone over threats, performance used for music performances or any other sort of entertainment, persuasion 
When you're trying to convince others, paladins, bards, warlocks and sorcerers use it for their spellcasting. Wisdom helps your character notice things about the environment, understand someone's feelings or heal your allies. Skills related to it are animal handling, dealing with animals inside, determining if you're being lied to, medicine when you're healing your allies or need to know something about anatomy, perception, checking if you spot anything, overall reflecting your awareness, and survival. Druids, rangers, and clerics use it for spellcasting. While creating your character, you will also be able to choose skill proficiency. As you see here, I have a deception plus 3 that is added to my dice roll. The skill proficiency depends on your character level. 1st to 4th level, plus 2 proficiency bonus, 5th to 8th plus 3, 9 to 12 plus 4, 13 to 16 plus 5, 17 to 20 plus 6. Advantage and disadvantage. Sometimes you will see that you have an advantage on an ability check or disadvantage. How it works, instead of one dice you throw two. If you have an advantage then the dice with the highest result will be the one used. If disadvantage, that's in reverse. In the example above I had the second dice picked by the game. My second dice rolled higher and that was my advantage dice. You should always try to get advantage. You can get it either by attacking your enemy while you're unnoticed, completing some special actions, for example the barbarian reckless attack, it always gives an advantage, some spells or circumstantial advantage based on your action, class or previous decision. Pay attention to them and try to use them to get an easier way to succeed. Inspiration. You'll be awarded with an inspiration whenever you make choices or action that fit into a character background. For example, if you have sage background, you can get awarded an inspiration point for reading a unique book or as a charlatan background whenever you manage to avoid a combat by using deception. You can accumulate as many inspiration points as you want. You will be able to use inspiration whenever you fail an ability check. You can use inspiration point to re-roll the dice. It can be very useful, especially when you need to succeed a persuasion check whenever your group is not ready for a fight. Combat. Combat is actually quite similar to ability checks. Behind each attack there is a d20 dice roll. You add your dexterity modifier to your attack and your damage roll when attacking with a range weapon or with a finesse weapon such as daggers or short swords. If you do a melee attack with a large sword or a two-handed sword, you will add your strat modifier to your attack roll. You will also add the strat modifier to your damage rolls. All your attacks go against the enemy's armor class. Armor class is pretty much the same as a difficulty check. If you want to succeed your attack, you need to roll the same or higher than the enemy's armor class. For example, a goblin has an armor class of 8, that means that you need to roll a dice with all the additional modifiers higher than 8. If you do so, then you successfully hit him and then you'll roll for damage. Armor class is based on the gear that the NPC or you are wearing, as well as on the dexterity modifier and perhaps on additional spells that you can use as a buff to raise it higher. Same goes for your enemies. If they want to hit you, they need to roll a dice higher than your armor class. The only difference between armor class and difficulty checking in Baldur's Gate representation is that we don't really see the armor class all the time in front of us and we don't have to visually see how the dice is getting thrown. We just click on attack and then we see hit or miss. If you open the combat log you will actually see a very detailed log of what happened. You will see every single attack, every single damage roll and every single dice rolled in any encounter. Damage rolls happen when you succeed in the attack roll. They are usually a different type of dice. It can be a d4, d8, d6 or d12. D stands for dice and number of dice range. After succeeding with your attack, you roll a d6, then you add additional strength modifier plus 2 and you end up hitting a total of 8 damage to your enemy. Initiative. You might notice as well that at the beginning of every single encounter you will see a text saying initiative. Initiative determines the order of each character in combat. Before the encounter starts, the system automatically rolls for everyone a d20 plus their dexterity modifier to determine the order of each other's turn. Saving throws. A saving throw is required to determine if your character resists a harmful effect. Mostly it is used to determine if you succeed in resisting negative spell effects, diseases or perhaps a trap. The game automatically rolls the dice for you whenever it is required. It. If you succeed in a saving throw, your character might take only half of the damage, resist a poison or avoid falling into a trap. Failing a saving throw can be quite painful. Depending on the ability of the saving throw, there is an added modifier. For example, if you're about to step into a trap, there will be a dice roll for reflex and reflex usually is based on your dexterity modifier. Hit points and death throws. Whenever one of your party members reaches zero hit points, then every single round your character will do a death throw. The character will be rolling a dice to determine if it dies or not. For each turn it will be rolled one dice, 
and whenever it accumulates three rolls below 10 that means death and three rolls above it means it will get to leave. Every critical failure counts as two fails when similarly the critical success roll counts as two successful throws. However, if your party member receives more damage than its maximum hit points, then the character will die instantly and the only way to bring them back will be with a revised scroll or spell. As long as your character is killed when they have zero hit points, they will become conscious once again. You can see also their death rolls in the combat log. Pretty much in the combat log, it will be stored all the dice rolls and it will be identical to a D&D game session. Spell slots and cantrips. Spell casters use a system of spell slots to cast their magical abilities. Sooner or later, you will have a spell caster in your group and it will be highly important to know how to manage their spells. Spell slots represent the number of times a magic wielder can cast before they need to rest and recuperate. The number of spell slots your caster has correlates with how many times they can cast a spell. As an example, a third level wizard will be able to cast four first level spells and two second level spells. Spells have different levels and the higher the spell level is, the fewer spell slots you will have. Each caster also knows cantrips. These spells don't require rest and can be cast an unlimited number of times. The strat of cantrips also scales with level. Cantrips are considered to be basic spells and there are not much in terms of strat compared to the spells that require spell slots. They are useful when you want to save your spell slots for a more challenging encounter. Managing caster fatigue is one of the most important gameplay aspects if you have a caster in your group. It can help you win or lose depending on how many slots they have available. The higher the level the caster is, the more slots they will be able to use. Each type of caster will have different amount of spell slots and slightly different mechanics related to how many spells they can use. Most spells are unique and it is worth to read the description before using them. Some, like magic missiles, will automatically hit the enemy. Some, like the fireball, will hit everyone in the radius, including your allies. Some will need an attack roll to succeed. Your bonus to the attack roll will be your spellcasting modifier. For example, for wizards it will be intelligence, for sorcerers it will be charisma, for clerics it will be wisdom. And that should cover everything for this beginner guide. In this game any class, race, combo could work. You can multi-class, do whatever seems fun for you. Doesn't matter what you go through, you will still be able to have a successful playthrough. And I don't recommend to save and reload to have a successful death roll because failing can be much more fun sometimes than winning as it can lead to some very unexpected twists. If you made it this far, I would like to thank you for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you find it interesting or helpful in any way, don't forget to like and subscribe as your engagement serves as a significant motivational boost to create new videos. Despite that, no matter where you find yourself, I wish you a fantastic day.